Hey everybody, this is your host Paul Gaither. This is my Xbox 360 dashboard. It is no longer Christmas, but this is part two of Christmas and Madden in 2023. Before New Year's hits, right, it's that whole week in between, and I owe you to a conclusion to that video. We are about an hour in, and if you haven't watched it, I ask, please go check it out. I thought it was a lot of fun. And if you haven't, here's the basic idea. We talked about a few different Madden games and so forth, and we actually fired up 06, 07, and 08. A basic summary there is this game feels like the pre-alpha, maybe the alpha. This feels like the beta, and this feels like the finished copy. I mean, if you talk about a game needs a two-year cycle, it felt like this was the true two-year cycle, and this is the finished copy, and this was just like a little head start that they got. Because remember, they only got this whenever dev kits came out. So I don't know how many months they had to get it out, but they didn't even have it a full-year cycle. I don't think they got six months to work on it or whatever. They didn't have much time. So I can cut them some slack, though it's still just ridiculous, and it should have been like, no, we're not going to be able to make like a launch title. Because they didn't... I don't know if they, they made a launch title for... Uh, the Xbox original, but yeah, they were able to make, you know, Man 2001. It probably was, like, launch, but they were already, like, doing PS2, Man 2001, so 2002 is just like, it's the game, you just keep making it, right? Um, but whatever the excuses is, I'm most likely deleting this when we're done doing this video. Like, I don't need 06 on my hard drive, taking up space. I might do some achievement hunting in 7, and then get it off the hard drive, because, again, there's not a lot of nostalgia or fun. In this game, A has some fun. I don't think I'm going to get nearly as distracted, like not even 25% as distracted as I've gotten with Madden 2002. But it's fun and worth keeping on the hard drive. Nine? <clears throat> well, we're going to get to nine. That's going to be the major focus. Not of the whole video today, but to get us started. And then we're going to take a look at 10, 11, 12, if possible. You've got 13 and Madden 25. Like, brief looks, not detailed looks. I may or may not even have time to look at these today. I doubt it. It's kind of part of our series. Maybe we can just do, like, each of these days. We can do a little bit of time looking at the games in, in a row. And have some fun, but we need to talk 09. And I tried making this video earlier, and I found myself almost, like, talking and ranting and raving and losing my mind. Ravings of a madman, right? Um... So I wanted to like kind of retry this after lunch and chill and have a new approach and rethink what I said before and approach and tell you this idea. Here's the thing. Looking back, you know, it's like it's the next step. Or not looking back, but like from the perspective, going back in time and looking at it when it was fresh, it's like here's the next step. In hindsight though, 9 is like the bridge. Both visually, like just look at the box art. There's like this box art, and then there's this box art style, and there's here like this thing in the middle. Like it's not all splashy like um, Drew Brees' image, but it's also not this. It's literally this in-between game. Every aspect of it is just this in-between game, right? So before we fire it up, because we're going to watch the intro, we need to talk about the intros to these games. We talked about it a little bit last time, I'm not going to bore you too much. This had an intro that got you at least fired up for the game, and it got some people angry, like, versus the E3 release and whatever. Don't need to get into that. This game didn't even have an intro. This game, and I'll make a qualifier, I haven't seen the intro of 15 until, like, now 2023. I haven't. Maybe there are some great intros. But if I look at Madden 14 through history... I'd say Madden 08 has one of, if not the greatest, intro of all time. Makes you want to play football, makes you want to play Madden. Love the intro. Nine has an intro that is worse than not having an intro. Let's watch it. EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, all right. I definitely. Wait, what's that red blue stuff in the background? That's not the normal intro. What is this? He even threw the ball and spun around the face backwards. Did you notice that? It's like, even the intro is like bugged.
Does that make you think NFL? Does that make you think a f- good football video game that simulates football? What does that make you think and feel when you see that intro? You know what it does? It sets you up for this background, this menu we have right here. Not only is that intro terrible, but they throw you into this menu. And if you've never played the game before, you don't have a profile save or anything, I'm 99% sure that the ghost of John Madden, he hadn't passed away yet, obviously, but the ghost of John Madden in a digital format that feels a little bit insulting to the man comes on screen and starts asking you to, like, take an IQ test, a visual, virtual Madden trainer thing. Like, this is not football. Okay? Part of me wants to go back in my menu and go show you NCAA Football 07. Maybe NCAA Football 8. I kind of want to do that right now. Just to show you a comparison of how to do something alright and the way they did it. I think it's 8. Might be 7 as well. We're going to watch the whole intro. We're going to skip stuff. We're just going to go into the menu. Yeah, we're going to skip it because we're going we're gonna to get to that game when we get to this game. Right? But I have to show you. Like, it looks like what they're trying to do in 9 is what they're doing here. If I'm remembering the right game, but way worse. Yeah. Look at this. Great music. Have the score of NFL Films by Sam Spence. Look at the ropes. Look at the marble flooring. Look at the trophy cases. Look at the banners. Like, yeah, there's that identity of uh, university or whatever. You've got the pictures in the hall, in the doorway. And you can explore here, like, on the ground level of sorts. You're in this little rotunda of sorts. Can I back off? Yeah. You kind of stand in that little rotunda area in the middle with the Boise State logo or whatever team you like up there, but you can like look around. There's like, there's a sense of honor. If we look at like head coach, right? Like there's something happening here. And 9 is just like, hey, remember that, what they did in 08? Let's do like a virtual trainer version of that. Let's do the X-Men Danger Room. But that, nope. EA Sports. To the nope. Game. Nope. Not yet. It's my error. No, that's what 09 is doing. What? Why is it skipping 09? Why is it skipping 09? Like I you can you can see the game clicking and clicking over. And as soon as it got to 8, it just jumped past 09. Look at that. Look at that right there. I won't even push the A button. Watch it go through. Come on. What's up? It felt like it like literally jumped both times. EA Sports. It's in the game. Right? So we're going to take a little bit closer look at that. All these menus, all this loading. Thank you for being patient with me. Because we're going we're gonna to get to the other games. But can you see what I'm talking about here now? Does it make sense? Like, it's just like a bad version of 08. It's like half or like... Two thirds of what the NCAA is going to be, and then that ring, like that Boise State logo, but now they've got the ring builder sitting on top of it or whatever. It's like these weird kind of assets, like they just kind of like ripped some of them away, <coughs> and you can allegedly um, scroll through here. There's menu. I turn the menu off. There we go. It lights up the bottom right, and we can zoom in on the trophy case like that, right? 
We back out. We can go to the rings. We can go to this trophy case, and it's got this virtual builder of trophies. I don't even care to finish. And that's it. But between that intro and this background, and you see that football field down there? You know what that is, right? Let's watch the ghost of John Madden himself. The virtual trainer. If you want to succeed in the National Football League, you have to be able to run the ball effectively. A solid ground game not only leads to points, teams that run the ball well can also control the clock, control the tempo of the game, and protect the lead. Like, this wasn't cool when it came out. This isn't cool now, in retrospect, like in nostalgia. Many times, it isn't just... Oh, it says seven to ten attempts. Like, what is this? And why are my lead blockers behind me? Like, why did the lead blockers... I, I guess they want, I want to change directions. They want to go lead block from me the other way, right? I mean, like, you know I'm not taking it seriously. Like, if they just stand here. This is, like, part of the problem. Is you can tell... That all the players in the game are basically this m fake model version with like a uniform and a skin just slapped on top of it. Like, obviously it's a video game, hello, duh, it's not real life. But like, it breaks the illusion of recreating real life football. It destroys the illusion. It's like, yeah, we know what we are. Here's your virtual field. This is what you're running on. You're not running on grass. You're running on the freaking hollow deck in Star Trek. You're in the X-Men Danger Room. Like, you're not on the field. We just load a texture that looks like a field. And that is what it is. You're, but it just breaks it. If you want to breaks that immersion 100%. So there's your virtual field. And it's just... It, it's not gone forever. Like, it's hiding in tin. It exists there in the background. It's just kind of lurking. But it's not something people look fondly back on. As opposed to the mini camp and the mini games and stuff of the PS2 era. It's a mess. And so I also want to talk about this room in general too. Because even if you want to say something nice. You want to say like, oh, you've got this visionary idea. And you have this artistic approach, and you want this kind of feel to it. What are you even doing with the space you have? Like, we'll talk about the screens in a second. I'll get to the screens. Top left corner. This balcony thing. What's going on up there? What's the point? Are there jerseys? Or framed pictures of famous moments? Or something? Like, does it look like anything is happening up there? Or should be happening up there. Because in the bottom left, looks like that could be maybe where you can go access like Hall of Fame records or Famous Moments or something. I think that was an NFL head coach. Um, I think they had uh, head coach 07 and head coach 09. And this is Madden 09. So like you can go like, oh, look at Vince Lombardi and Jerry Rice and all these like famous records and all this stuff, whatever. Maybe they don't want to have Jerry Rice in there or that because they have to pay the likenesses or something. I don't know. But it's like it's an empty door that doesn't go anywhere. Maybe it goes to the bathroom, right? It's the back door out of the program. So this entire, like, what, quarter, a little less than a quarter of the screen uh, is just nothingness. What's up with these two monitors? They're acting as one monitor. They're kind of, like, bent towards you as the user. There's no banner in the middle. There's no NFL shield. There's nothing happening. And the fact that they're acting as one giant screen. There's so much that could have been done. Even with this garbage design. 
to make it less garbage, right? Could you imagine if they took real life clips of games and maybe had like that on the left side, like a real life NFL films clip, and then on the right hand side they had maybe not like an exact reproduction, but like another big time play. So it's like they have like Chad Johnson doing one of his famous dances. And then on the right hand side, you've got the celebration of Chad Johnson, the video game version, doing that dance. Or how it's interpreted in this game. Because guess what? That's one of the features in this game is like choose your own celebration. Right? Like they have the Lambo leap. And they can have like how about these seats as the achievement by celebrating with the fans. And so they can have the uh, their version of the Lambo leap playing on the right hand side. They could have Randy Moss's splitting the defense animation and then in the video game his version. Like you can have these real footage and video game footage and blend them together. You know what you could do? Another feature I think that was in last year's game, 08, but it's definitely part of this game. Yeah, it's new for this game, new. Manage video highlights. You know what would be great is maybe you could also have the user's highlights come on that screen and remind you of your greatest moments. There's so many things you could do with those screens, but that's what they came up with. That's their background. Don't forget the ring builder. Buy your Jocelyn ring now. Build your ring. Like, did anyone buy that ring? Did any? Did even one real human being do that? And I say real human being as opposed to fake human being, right? As opposed to like an employee or whatever one that was like mocked up. Did they even have one actual customer? Well, they must have because it was brought back for the next year, right? Because the the ring builder thing that was in a way they must have like sold enough. Say, let's get this back in the game for year number two. Maybe it's a two-year contract and they were stuck with it. Can you imagine? Like, did, I don't want to, like, knock on anyone's, like, jive. Like, if you did a ring builder and you really bought the Jocelyn ring and you love it, like, okay, cool. Take pictures of it. Show us. Make a video. Tell us why it's important to you because that's a story. That's a real human being. If the answer is yes, then you know what? More power to you. So you must have had a read. How do you feel about that now, buying that ring? Do you love it? Like, I'm not going to knock on anyone's jive, you know? Like, you like that? Cool. Tell me about it. I want to know. Because I have in my heart of hearts, if I had to bet money to it, I bet not a single person bought into that crap. Having a sip of my tea. What do you think? Am I off base with that? So you know what? We got to go. I, I want to try to stay positive about things. I want to try to stay positive about interesting things. Um, it makes it difficult. You know what we can also talk about here? The default roster in this game does not have the cover boy. Does not have Mr. Brett Favre himself. However, in an updated roster, which has been so kindly shared with me by users online so that I can have this available to you, the internet archives of the world, is we have the second to last roster update, and it's got Brett Favre on it. I we can click edit player, and he doesn't even show up. See, that's the point of the screen, right? We virtually walk up and there he is on the screen. They don't even want to put him up actually on the screen. They want to like a virtually version of our virtual athlete in virtual mode and a virtual image, right? So Brett Favre, QB, all that, college, da 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 da. And there's nothing else to choose from. There's equipment, helmet style, and all that stuff and everything in between. But nothing about his throwing style, pattern, whatever. The player ratings, we can mess with that. His contract info, we can't mess with that. We can do whatever we want with that. It doesn't matter, but we can't do his uh, player traits. He doesn't have any. can't do the throwing style. Don't think he has it. I think that's a feature for Madden 10 that they do. But Favre is in the game. And so that can be a little bit of fun. Something else that's really nice about this game is the weather effects. We can look at different weather effects. We're going to like involve Brett Favre. Let's do that. Let's do first Jets. 
Jets Patriots. And I think this is the first game. I don't remember if I tried it with 08. I think this is the first game where we can actually select the controller to be in the middle with the word spectate right there. So let's go into settings. Not game skill. Gameplay. No. Yeah. Special team settings, game rules. It's not just on there. Okay. Three minutes, there's no accelerated clock. That's also interesting. Um, play clock on. Um, let's do two minutes. Yeah, one minute quarters. Yeah, because we just want to look at presentation, right? Yeah, that's all we want is presentation right now. Okay. Seems good to me. Let's go play now. Let's show off the weather. Let's go... Patriots are at home. Jets are on the road. Let's go... Advanced options. And let's call it a heavy snow game. In the evening. And I think we want to put Tom Brady as the quarterback. Because he's hurt. Yeah. But play now, it doesn't matter. It only affects the franchise mode. So Patriots... Jets. Options. Afternoon. Heavy snow. Night game. Let's let's get it epic. And then see if it saves those adjustments. And let's listen to John Madden and Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth. Got some rivalry info on the screen. We're here at Gillette Stadium, and since his opening in 2002. This field has seen its fair share of great games. And fans crowding the stadium hope this game will be no different between New York and New England. Let's take you now to Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth. We're getting set for the kickoff. And this game is now underway. And this will be just awful weather as we expect snow and freezing wind. Tom Hammond here along with Chris Collinsworth. Thanks for joining us. Chris, how do you see the weather playing a factor in this one? A couple of things I've learned over the years is that the offense in the snow has an advantage because the pass rushers are slowed just a little bit. And eventually those defensive backs tend to slip coming in and out. The offensive line didn't get much of a push on that play, and the runner was stuck. Well, that's what happens when defensively you get every gap covered. There is simply nowhere to go with the football. No. So I'm pausing it right here. You can see certain things that get skipped in terms of an introduction versus when we go to play now. Um, but we can also see the speed of the game. Like, the NFL is a fast game. Players are fast. But Madden 10 ends up giving us um, an option to have the game speed changed. And a lot of, and also, I believe they slowed down the normal gameplay to something that resembles true, like football speed. Like this game plays, I believe Ian Cummings and them said in a blog that nine plays like fast or very fast on Madden 10, and then they have the game set to normal. So if you liked Madden 9 style, you either have to set it to fast or very fast to get this kind of speed of gameplay. But then you can also set it to slow and very slow. <clears throat> but yeah, this is faster than it should be. It's acknowledged that way. Um, we can talk about, like, when you break the huddle. We saw the, like, presentation of 7 and, especially 6 and 7, like, getting to the line of scrimmage and everything. And now you can see that they actually have a huddle. They break the huddle. They line up properly. And you can see how the defense is lining up like as a real quarterback would or whatever. And instead of having the camera focus on the quarterback and then the quarterback making fake adjustments and chewing up your play clock, like you can actually see it and you can start mentally making adjustments before you start tapping the buttons to make adjustments. 
and you already know what kind of adjustments you want to make because you can actually see the defense like a quarterback would, which is so important. So they have like that top-down shot of the huddle breaking or a few different angles of the huddle breaking, whatever, but you get to process things just like a quarterback would after breaking the huddle. Back that time. Of linemen, about the defensive linemen, they have to play well in this one. Both coaches have to challenge these big guys and have a camera set by the time that you're ready to snap it or make adjustments. And they get it at the 31. Looks as if they'll go three and out on this offensive series. And that's embarrassing for an offense to get pushed around, to get manhandled like the defense did that time. You hang your head a little bit going back to the bench. He gets it away. And he's hammered at the 44 yard line. What happened to the coverage there, Chris? Oh, come on. They completely lost containment on that guy. You just can't let that happen. I'll, I'll be honest. They were really lucky they didn't give up a touchdown on that one. We're at the one minute mark. You can hear the dialogue between Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth and they play off of each other. That's something I'm going to touch on when we look at the other games is when they switch over from Tom Hammond to Gus Johnson in Madden 11, you can hear lines that are designed for Chris to work with Tom. Like, he literally still says Tom more than once, like in recordings, um, when he's talking to Gus. And you can hear the edits and cuts that are designed on what... Tom is saying and Chris responding to it, but then Gus's line doesn't match up. So it's like it does, it sounds so terrible, but it's EA, so they know that you don't care or they don't care that you care. Um, it's just really sloppy handling of the audio cues, the programming, the recording, not bringing Chris in for new lines or whatever. Just If they did bring Chris in for new lines, they certainly didn't replace the ones where he's responding to Tom Hammond and have him at least respond to Gus instead. You know, they didn't do a professional job. That's the point. Like, professionalism demands more. Um, but they did do a pretty good job here. They just tried to copy and paste in typical EA style, and you get caught with how sloppy that gets. You can see the game tackling. And the defense has a heavy rush. Right through his hands. He almost did the football. What an effort out there. He just cut his hands in there and broke it up. I love watching the closing speed of this defense. When they see the ball, they just get it. Comes down with it. He's tackled at 27. That pass is good for a first down. And he had some. Pretty sure that that's Tom Brady's voice, just like uh, Peyton Manning and other ones. You can hear like the actual cadence that the quarterbacks have. I believe in 08, and I believe in 09 they have it. I think it's 10. I, I might have said it in the previous video that only 8 had it. Um, 9 has what sounds like, he's like, 120! 120 sounds like Tom. Sounds like they took like real audio clips from NFL Films um, archives. And, and got a lot, not all, but a lot of quarterback cadences right. But I think it's 10 and potentially 11 that don't. And I don't think we get them back until 12, which is another reason like people like 12 so much. Um, there's like those little things. It's like, well, they had it in the game four years ago, you know, whatever. <clears throat> but now it's back, you know, in 12, that kind of thing. So let's go back to the game. He reared back and threw that one about as hard as he could. Drops back on first down. He throws left. This is complete. Brought down at the 20 wall. A five yard gain. Three wide receivers on the field. The quarterback in the shotgun. Back to throw. Here's the pass. With the catch. He's brought down at the five yard line. How about that pass? There's really no better feeling as an offense. Hopefully, they get a touchdown here and we get to see a celebration. Defense is trying to get you. They're trying to make you nervous, and you just made them pay. Looking to throw. Looking for a receiver. And it's picked. Okay, that happened too, I guess. And the safety. There's a challenge at the field. There's big hits, but that time it was his soft hands that made the difference. And they will not change the ruling on the You know what's kind of crazy? I mean, <clears throat> of course the play is going to stand. 
But something that you definitely saw a lot in this game, a lot in this game, and you still see it, I think, even all the way into Madden 25, I have to deal with the problem. Like, I don't remember how prevalent it was in 8, but you see how the foot is down here, and then the right foot will just, like, touch a pocket of air and not be on the ground. See, here, here it is on the ground. But there are times where it's like the right foot will hit a pocket of air and not touch the ground or stay lifted. Then the left leg would take another step, and so it's still just the left foot down, and then the right foot finally steps out of bounds. And they would not have counted this, but it does clearly touch the ground. Um, and my goodness, is that so loud. Like, not even like a little bit of chill in that music. There you go, my goodness. Didn't want to have to keep talking over that. Um, but there's times where it would just be like that. And it would, like, around here-ish, the foot would, like, flatten out and just be in the air above the ground and not ever touch. And we might see that happen later on, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's like they have plenty of room to take one, two, three steps, maybe even drag a toe or whatever, and then it's called incomplete. Taking another look at So... They line up with one running back in the backfield, three left. Short throw to the left. And he's out at about the 21 from their own 22-yard line. Another thing to talk about before we get to Madden 10 is, and I see if we can find instances of it here at Sliding. Yep, I, w I knew that this is all I had to do to get it. Look at the left foot of this offensive tackle, right? The right foot comes off the ground. The left foot's already kind of moving forward in animation, like where it's planted in the grass. It moves forward, then it slides. His right foot's off the ground, and his left foot is like sliding through the grass to suck him into a position where he, they want him to be. Instead of like proper motion capture and proper animation and planting, where you'd actually have that right leg kick back, pin itself to the ground, have the left foot come back to where it belongs... Because it's like, there is no movement of the left leg. It's just kind of there. And then it goes further back. So you're not kick sliding. That's the point of kick sliding is your right foot here, as the right tackle, is kicking back. You know, and then you plant and then you kick back. But now he's like kicking his right foot off the ground like that. And then they're just, again, super sliding. Look at that left foot. Sliding on the ground. Lots of sliding on the ground. I don't remember if Madden 10 is like completely pinned in the ground. I think that's something they tried to claim. Um, and then there's another issue here. Just of like the bodies and everything. Like look how they cross the legs up into each other. And look at the way like the ankles kind of collapse. And like yeah the way that animation the foot just kind of slides through the ground. And yeah, the way the ankles twist up and click together and just everything is so unnatural. Like, they can't even get a proper drop back. Like, that's your drop back. Like, you can't get a motion capture person to come in and do it. ESPN 2K5 had Tom Brady and Tim Rattay and I think some other quarterbacks. But it had two quarterbacks come in and do mocap work. Do real actions. And Madden has mocap work, but I don't even want to get into that can of worms yet. I say yet. You see this angle, it's a nice angle, and yet you still finally get that defensive view. You get breaking the huddle and lining up. Halftime show. We're gonna get anything? Both these teams have struggled offensively as we head to halftime score. Hey, at least he talks about it, unlike the radio guy. And as a user, you're gonna get the option of viewing replays just like in a late. Good cinematic camera angle. 
The field looks crazy good in the snow. The atmosphere. You can see the snow is everywhere on the field. I think that was a problem in NCAA 7, maybe even NCAA 8. I didn't try the snow in Madden 08, um, where it was like just the field had snow, and outside the field like didn't have any look of the weather effect. Where here they've got like piles of snow and everything, like it gives you more of the illusion of what's happening. Tom Brady can fly. Flap, flap. And then we have conversations about run blocking logic and the fact that, that they both peel out instead of having one person take on the block against 92 Ellis. Like they both take off and no one even accounts for that player. The bad blocking angles and designs and animations and styles and just the complete mess of everything happening out here is just classic Madden problems that we're going to see improvements. Look at what 70 is doing. Logan Mankins, one of the better like run blocking guards and just one of the better guards like of all time. And the sliding again, the transition. You're here and then slide in midair Oh, into this position to get into your animation. There's uh, someone whose name likes to talk about how they... Um, I won't even say anything about the name. There's an individual who makes fantastic content. I have nothing bad to say about them. But um, they definitely like to talk about how animation-driven football is uh, the death of the game. It shouldn't have animation-driven football. And I always say, no, it should. It just needs more. It needs better. It needs proper coding. It doesn't need to force animations that are not possible like this. Like, if he's going to go in this angle or do this thing, then we need an animation where it needs to choose an animation where 99 here is attacking the shoulder of 70 and busting through, not having 70 suck into this animation. So we need... A deeper library, more trigger points, animations for those trigger points, like all kinds of other things need to happen smoothly. And you get that in 2K8. 2K8, like everyone's, it's so beautiful and look at the motion. Like, it's animation driven, but they do it well. It's not animations that are the problem. It's how they're executed and implemented is the problem. The variety and depth is the problem, the lack thereof. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. There's something else I want to show off. More things. Like, really, Paul? You're going to spend almost 40 minutes talking about online? There's things to talk about here. Uh, something I want to show you, that I want to take advantage of. And let's go, let's play, let's play against the Seahawks like normal. And let's go to settings. Um, let's play a longer game. Oh no, quarter length. There's no accelerated clock, so whatever. Let's play uh, 1 p.m. time. The afternoon game. Weather, let's go um, partly cloudy, overcast. It's not going to rain though, is it? Rainy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's play Rainy. And let's go here. You have Beginner, where the plays are called automatically. Simple Play Selection Intermediate. Advanced is the standard Madden play calling way. And Hardcore, which takes away the things that I'm going to show you that are in standard. Hardcore is the normal way we call plays, but it's also the normal way of presentation. I want to show advanced, and I want to show unlimited rewinds, because I don't care about like rewinding it and everything. I want to show you this like game cast whatever review feature that they have in this game. They 
only like to fire it off when you make a mistake as a user. And what I want to show you, I feel if it had been properly implemented, and I said it at the time, and I gave the advice to them even when they were working on 11, like, is it still in the code or did you delete it? Is it in there? Is like, you could have used this in so many great moments. Not just when the user makes a mistake, but to highlight when a user does something well. Like a mistake on the half of the defense or whatever. Like a recap of a great touchdown to make us feel good. Like there's so much potential in what I'm going to show you. But it only happens when the user makes a mistake. So let's look at user play introduction. Take it away, John, in just a second. What else can you say but it's time for some football? And we're only moments away from the opening kick. Now we'll go to Tom Hammond and Chris Collins for the opening kickoff. Tom, you see this giant thing on the screen? For the game. And the players Good below? Everyone. Tom Hammond here, alongside me, Chris Collinsworth. Thanks for tuning in. Chris, how do you see the weather playing a factor in this? For some teams, the rain doesn't seem to affect them at all. Others, they just can't execute as effectively in this kind of weather. I don't know if it's turnovers, drop passes, poor running what but they just don't seem to work as well. Chris, what are your thoughts on this rivalry game? Well, we've talked about this one all week. Both teams need a win, and I expect we'll see everything they have to offer here today. Should be a good one. So you can see the field is all set up for the player introductions. It has the helmet on the field. It has the firework canisters going off. The players ran out and everything. All of that presentation stuff, the one thing in the previous camera angle, it wasn't there. Um, yeah, all the presentation stuff is out there on the field that we had in Madden 7 and 8. And 8 was really nice. Had the opposing team out, come out for introductions, had the home team, had all that stuff. And now it's just kind of an afterthought out there. And, like, who cares? So, this is what it is. Let's receive. Let's go to pause menu. I talked to you about 06, had some really great camera shots when you were pausing the game. And I don't think these are great shots. These are like within the field of play. Like you don't get the great stadium shots that I'm accustomed to seeing. Like even at Candlestick Park, remember the part like we got to see the area with the chain link fence and everything. Uh, there's no instant replay to go to. Uh, remember I mentioned like they even had the chain link fence. And everything in the tunnel. Like they had all that detail. Like, where is it? Like here. Like where are all those shots? It, it, it's downgraded. You know I like the backgrounds. Oh, there it is. There's the chain link fence and all that area. I mean I know where it is in the stadium. But it's like are they going to show it? Like they had some great shots before. And they're just not here. Uh, click return. Here's the opening kick. Calls for the fair catch. You always want to have a successful first drive. Really sets the tone for the whole game on. So let's go do that. Let's go to the instant replay. And here. Right? There's that chain link fence and everything. We basically had the camera set back there looking out. From the tunnel in the stadium and all that. Not the tunnel, but that area. Right? That region. Those angles. These different boxes, booths, areas. We had some really fascinating shots. Unique shots. That we just can't get and don't have access to. We're only allowed in the field. We can't even explore the rest of the stadium. Isn't that a shame? Maybe they didn't want to design the outside of the stadium, but... I don't want to say let us go outside, but... Come on, it would have been nice to have more freedom. Let's see how they do here. Okay, it's time to call a... Well, it's time to look at this, too. Uh, there's the instant replay. Play type. Standard pass. Flank or drive. They line up at the I feel like taking a sack. Forcing the ball to A. Didn't work, huh? Should we get a sack on this play? 
the stadium ticket office. Second down, 10 yards to go. Because I got to be able to trigger the thing I want to show you. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh no, I got taken down. Yep, here we go. And let's rewind it. So they'll face a second and ten. <clears throat> and let's talk about that. That's one of the things I wanted to show off. I'm not saying it has to be that full presentation with the intro and the multi-stage aspects and all that. For every play. All the time. No. But there's so much there. So much idea. So much presentation. So much potential. They could have been expanded on and developed, regardless if they kept Chris Collinsworth or not, because uh, they'd later go on to, you know, uh, Phil Sims, right? Um, like, can you imagine after you score a touchdown that they either selected the touchdown play itself and or broke down a key play that got you chunk yardage? on the drive that set up the touchdown play, so that after your extra point, but before the kickoff, like a TV broadcast, whatever, like let's break it down one more time, let's take a look at this, whatever, let's take one more look at that play that set this up, you know, that kind of thing, that they talk about that. They don't interrupt you during your drive, but maybe when you call a timeout, maybe whenever you, like, the quarter ends when you score a touchdown. You kick a field goal, and maybe they highlight what the defense does. Like, there's so many opportunities where, as a user, you can just skip it and you don't feel like you're being interrupted all the time. But you could develop that, and it doesn't have to be like, let's look at the defensive play. And, like, one thing that I didn't like at all was the, and this is the percentage of success based on the personnel formation. Like, cut that crap. Like, Show me, like, the play and have that audio. Like, don't even need the highlighted, like, green and red aura around the players or stuff. But just that audio. Like, show me the instant replay and have Collinsworth or someone talk about the play the way they did. And bring the replays to a little bit more life rather than just generally playing generic script audio. Make it feel more like they actually looked at the play that they just saw. How the tight end came open, how the winner, like, that was cool. Right? Like, as opposed to the generic banter that we have whenever you go to hardcore mode and that's turned off. There was so much potential there, but it, they only fire it off when you make mistakes as a user. Yeah. Yeah. I know you hate these long yardage situations, but you really have to get this one. Third and ten, ball on their own twenty. Run, 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 run. They line up with one running back in the backfield. Three yards. On the run, he throws it. Pats it away. Ball. Good job. Good job. Good job. Third and long. So we're likely to see the putting unit here. I kind of figured out trying to throw an interception. Like triggering another one. Oh, 
Oh, well, I guess you can catch it, too. I was just like, trying to throw that out of me. You hear this? That was a pretty pass. Like, you hear how generic that is? How great would it be? Like, you don't even have to do the let's, the, the Tom Hammond, let's go to Chris and this is an opportunity to da, 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 da. Like, no. Just play the audio that you would have played breaking down the play. Not just like, and then he got off the back foot. Okay, I mean, yeah, that is technically like a thing that happened, which is like kind of nice that he acknowledged it, but. Like, give me some better Get audio. Around here. Force those safeties to play up close to the line of scrimmage. An eight-man front. It's going to open up things for your passing game later. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 37-yard line. But let's just keep trying to force it to uh, Y and A until we throw interceptions, right? from you. That's just good old-fashioned football, but you also know typically when you get man coverage, your quarterback is under pressure. And they'll line this one up with two tight ends. Come on, pick it. I want to throw an interception. It was fine a way to throw an interception here. Uh, I got an idea. How about we throw curl flats and like force it to the curls? Force it to the curls when they're like they're trying to throw an interception. Or not, I guess. Because I want to get the uh, the game replay action. Okay, slap down, whatever. Maybe we can force it to B on the, the deep comeback if they go into a zone or something. Or they can just do that. So another third down upcoming for the offense. Looks to pass. Throws out to the right. There we go. Let's go. Do the uh, do the thing where you talk about the game. Time to break down that play. Yes. EA Sports Backtrack. Here's what do you think? And he's not going to talk about it. I'm not pushing any buttons. I'm not skipping it. Oh, great. No audio. Okay. Apparently no audio. Great. Well, you get the idea. That was a thing. That could have been implemented properly. And Tom Hammond was like, hey, we're going to go like show you this thing. Maybe it's because I already used the um, rewind feature. Maybe they try to tell you that stuff. That's probably what happened because I already used rewind. I think it shuts off after you use all your rewinds up, but I have unlimited, so it's going to keep going. But it's used as a tool to try to teach you like what you did wrong so that you can press rewind and do better next time. It feels like that was the purpose of that mechanic. But it had so much more potential. So, I mean, that's the game. The player models. Oh, you have to deal with this all the time. Did you get better or worse? And you're through an interception. So, would you like to go into the trainer? No. I don't want to. Okay. And, um, anything else? There's the obligatory talk about the bugs, but I believe the version I'm playing doesn't apply the 
like doesn't have the bugs applied like in terms of uh, the direct snap glitch and all of that you can look up madden 09 direct snap glitch and you can see it in action it's really crazy um wide receiver direct snap glitch you might need to type in wr direct snap glitch i might try to put it in the um description if i don't put it in the description maybe remind me to do it um superstar franchise like i think this franchise is going to be the same just another different um layout than we had with 08 right and you've got the franchise options here and everything and i think this is 08's menu as well and i hit back and you just kind of have the basic franchise menu right you play your exhibition games and you can put guys on the trade block or whatever. There's no real, like, news. There's no Twitter feed. There's no um, weekly update. There's no newspaper stuff. There's nothing to do than just play your games. There's no recap. There's just a lot of nothing. It's really boring. You play your games and then you're done. You kind of have your history book and your stat central or whatever. And that's kind of how it goes. Um, I don't really want to dive too much into franchises in this kind of video, in this video series. And we're almost an hour into this, and I thought I wasn't going to talk about Madden 09 for an hour, but we did. I think I even said I didn't want to talk about Madden 09 for an hour, but how do you not? How do you not talk about Madden 09 for an hour? Because that's all the time I want to give this game on my channel. I don't think Madden 09 deserves more time but like i'm not going to do let's plays i'm not going to do franchise builds i'm not going to do any of that stuff there might be some fun moment where we try to have brett Favre be a new england patriot to take over for the injured tom brady and play with randy moss and all of that stuff like that could be a fun alternate timeline instead of with the jets but with new england that's a fun what if there could be the fun what if of just like what if he actually made the playoffs and didn't like wasn't hurt in the season, didn't get hurt in the season. But ultimately it's like I find myself deleting 06 soon, maybe trying for achievements in 07 and deleting it. I don't want to delete 09. Well, probably from my hard drive, but not the save file with his roster update in case I ever want to download it again for whatever masochistic reason. But I like keeping 8 on the game, like on the console, and keeping 10. I would delete 11 if I literally wasn't attached to it. Like, you can go into credits, and we might do that another time. I'm in the special thanks, um, because of the community day and all that stuff. But other than that, like, I have that own personal nostalgia, like, attachment to it. But not because it's a good game. I can, when we get to 11, I can tell my stories and everything. But I think after we do a review, just like this 09, like, I think we're going to be deleting it off the console at a certain point. Once I get footage for my channel up, there's no reason to continue. I think the same will happen to 13. Like, we'll look at it, we'll talk about it, it'll probably be gone. We'll probably just have 8 and 10 and 12 and 14 <laughs> and all the other ones in between uh, gutted. And uh, who knows about these, because I've literally never played them, and I'm going to go in blind with you learning about them. And see if I keep any or all of them. Do we just keep 14 and 16 or whatever? Like, just 15 or 17? Are they worth it? I don't know. We'll find out. Seeing how it's been an hour, I think it's a good time for me to check up with my family, come back, and maybe we can start taking a look. Maybe, but the goal is to start taking a look at this trilogy of games in 12 deserves maybe an hour or two or more videos and like franchises and all kinds of stuff that's the thing i also don't want to jump into these games and like do a super duper duper deep dive multi-hour and all that stuff but just like really reviewing these games and it was faster to review these because this is just trash look it's trash hey this is less trash but not as good as this hey look how good this is wow look at the player models and look at the um weather effects look at all these kinds of things but you can see how this is going to be better by comparison so now that you can see like the player models and all that like yeah i think that's what i'm gonna do we're gonna check on our family 
and we're probably gonna come back and check out Madden 10 afterwards. So love having you here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you for Madden 10.